dedicated to empowering you with information, to make positive choices, and be advocates for your overall well-being. Welcome to The Health View. Welcome to The Health View. I'm Yvonne Donitz, and our show today is about community-supported agriculture. What is a CSA? What does it include? How do you choose one? What do you get? And how do you know that you are receiving quality food? My guest today is Steve Normanton. He is the owner of Normanton Farms, which is located at 226 Charles Bancroft Highway in Litchfield, New Hampshire. Steve grew up in South Africa, where he learned the livestock trade from his mentor, Ian Blackwood. Steve worked throughout his school years on Ian's 16,000 acre operation raising antelope, giraffe, rhinoceros, buffalo, and other African game, in addition to cattle. After serving his country in the military and a stint in the agricultural college, Steve quickly climbed the agribusiness ladder, ending up as a farm manager for the Mentz Brothers. The Mentz Brothers operation grew from 8,000 acres to 34,000 acres during Steve's two-year tenure there, with a 200-cow dairy, a 120-sow pig breeding unit, and a 500-head beef operation, plus corn and peanuts, and a butchering facility. After that, and an extended walkabout, including two years of safari guiding, Steve was led around the world and eventually to the United States, where he married and settled. While working as a carpenter to support himself and his new family, Steve immediately scrapped together some cattle, raised them on borrowed land, and searched for an opportunity to establish himself as a full-time farmer on his own place. Steve now farms on the banks of the Merrimack River in Litchfield, New Hampshire. He raises grass-fed beef, free-range pigs, organic pasture-raised meat and laying chickens, grass-fed lamb, and organic vegetables. This he does on 120 acres of leased land in neighboring towns. Holistic management and soil health is the core foundation to his stewardship approach to the form. Steve serves as a president of the Granite State Graziers, an organization that exists to strengthen the viability and sustainability of New Hampshire's farms through forage and grazing-based agriculture. He is a board member of Green Start, whose mission is to foster a resilient energy and food system for New Hampshire by providing technical education and practical agricultural examples. Welcome, Steve. I'm so delighted that you're here today. And the first question that is so important to ask you is, what is a CSA? Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Uh, CSA uh, is Community Supported Agriculture. And what that entails, or so the idea behind community-supported agriculture, is that people looking for food that's grown locally in their community would uh, support the farmer and their needs um, in order to have the farmer produce that food for them. Mm -hmm. And how, what, what are the differences? How does one choose a CSA? Well, I think the first thing is you've got to find something that really suits um, your needs. You might want to look at the location as close to you as, as possible, um, reducing carbon footprint. Uh, the other thing is per perhaps what the CSA is, has to offer um, would be a good idea. Um, maybe looking and understanding how the um, product is being produced is 
something else you may want to consider. Okay, and on your farm, you have 120 acres that you're working on. What yes. are the types of things that you offer there and grow there that are involved with the CSA? Well, primarily the CSA component of the farm is uh, uh, centered on uh, vegetable production. Organic vegetable. Organic vegetable production, yes. And um, the idea behind that is, you know, we said let's grow some vegetables, but let's see how many people are interested in it. Um, by having people sign up for our CSA, um, you know, that gives us an idea of how much we really need to produce um, and, and, and how much seed to buy and so on and so forth. Um, you know, and then for 26 weeks of the year, you're going to get some of nature's bounty um, out of the vegetable garden. For and that those comes in shares, right? Half that, shares or full shares? Yes. And what does that mean? Uh, well, a full share is for typically for a family of four for about a week, and a half share would be for, you know, two people or two people with small kids. Um, that should be enough vegetables um, to sustain you through the week. And do those vegetables supply all that a family needs for vegetables, or do they need to supplement in the grocery store? They would probably need to, um, quantity-wise, it's fine. Diversity-wise, it's going to differ in, uh, as the season moves um, on uh, through the course of the season. It's going to vary. So in the beginning of the season, you're going to probably land up with uh, a lot of leafy greens, um, which grow really well when the weather's cool as we start getting into the warmer months, uh, you know, end of June. Then you get uh, into things like tomatoes and squash and uh, summer squash and uh, some cabbages and so on and so forth. And then as we move into the fall, you'll, uh, these things will just change. And so um, if you like to eat spaghetti squash all year round, you're not going to get that from a CSA. You're going to get spaghetti squash when the squ spaghetti squash is, um, you know, um, is available. But could, you could choose to freeze it, though, so that you can have it. Um, some things like squash and, <clears throat> excuse me, um, onions and potatoes and uh, are good storage vegetables. And the varieties that we produce towards the end of the season will allow you to be able to store them um, a, a little longer. Um, you know, other things you could process and, and chop up and, and freeze. Um, of course, there's always fermenting of vegetables, um, which is a great way to go about preserving. Everybody likes sauerkraut, mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's a simple process of taking, you know, cabbage and adding salt to it to draw out the moisture, and then it ferments in a sealed container. Um, and uh, that's really important to eat those kinds of fermented products into the winter when fresh stuff is not readily available. Okay, so on your farm, how do people know that they're getting top quality vegetables from your organic farm? How do you take care of the soil and the nurturing of the land in order to produce good produce? Well, I think that the um, proof of, uh, in the pudding is in the eating, is what they say. So um, once you're able to sample uh, some of the vegetables, you'll really get a good feeling uh, or you'll definitely taste the difference. Um, what is, uh, what makes the vegetables we grow, I wouldn't say any more special than anybody else doing it our way, but what really sets it apart is we use animal fertility to improve the soil and um, soil, uh, you know, good management practices on the soil like cover cropping and so on to re um, maintain the fertility in the soil. and. Um, you know, that's very much similar to what would happen in nature if, if um, you've got all these different animals that contribute to the management of, of the soil and creating, and plus they're little organisms that we don't see and account for that live in the soil that need all these external inputs to make everything work harmoniously. And these other animals are located on your farm because you have a fairly 
broad farm spectrum of animals, do you not? Because you offer other things. Yes, for sure. Um, we do. Uh, our signature product is actually grass-fed beef, mm. um, and uh, they form the foundation of um, the whole uh, management practice of um, you know keeping the soil healthy, um, and then we follow those with. We also have uh, lamb, and we do chicken and we do pigs and um, we do laying hens and all of those rotate around the farm uh, we stockpile manure from um, you know uh, later on in the season and that gets incorporated into the garden we also have um, chicken litter and manure that we compost that will also get added to the garden and so we're constantly feeding the soil and we're feeding the soil healthy I remember that uh, one of the things that you have said is that good soil is like gold. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes, it is. It's, it's priceless. It's uh, very undervalued, um, uh, you know, in today's day and age, but it's mm. the foundation of our civilization. Without good, healthy soil to produce good, healthy food to eat, we would not be able to exist. So your beef and your chicken and your laying eggs besides the organic vegetables that you have within the CSA, yes. do people have an opportunity to purchase those things? Um, yeah, uh, everything's available at the farm. We kind of do a semi kind of CSA oh, so concept um, with that where, you know, um, people uh, would subscribe for a portion of um, the meat and, and animal. And what makes your farm and your CSA different from others? Are you more on a smaller side and then supported by your neighbors and your local community? Um, we're uh, probably as a farming operation, we um, are medium to large for New Hampshire compared to California. We're probably a drop in the bucket. Okay. Um, you know, we are, happen to be in a good location close to Nashua, Manchester, Hudson, um, and, uh, you know, so the community are able to get involved by supporting us, um, you know, by knowing that there's a good source of food available within, you know, f five miles as the crow flies. And you provide information for people who participate in your CSA on the best way to use the food that they're getting? We do. We, there's all that information is always available uh, on the website we have recipes um, for some of the meat cuts uh, at CSA pickup uh, if people aren't sure we have knowledgeable staff that can come up with ideas and ways to use things uh, if it's something really unique um, you know there might be a recipe printed out for somebody to try and if people wanted to learn more about it, how might they learn it? What is your website? Um, they could visit Steve, uh, www.stevenormanton.com. Okay. Um, what I wanted to mention is, uh, you know, who the typical people are that would join yes. a CSA. Um, and, you know, to distinguish uh, myself from other CSAs um, around we are organic, so a lot of people interested in good, healthy food would, um, you know, uh, you know, support would join a CSA like this. Um, and that's because of your practices related to the soil and the, everything that you do. Yes, that's correct. Um, you know, and if you of that mindset, well, sure, you could buy organic vegetables down at Hannaford's or Whole Foods or market basket, but the other reason to join a, a community-supported agriculture venture would be to really support the small farmer, you know, uh, support your local farmer, um, because it's better to know where your food's coming from right. than not understand where it's coming from at all. So you've got the health thing that's important, but like I said, you could get organic vegetables um, at at Whole Foods and but who then knows? they're shipped, right? And so it's a matter of days. It's not as fresh where people are getting it at a CSA. You're literally picking it right. up and then they're getting it. And and you don't know the conditions under which it, because it's hard to drive to California and check out what that vegetable farm looks like. Yes. But if you're buying from 
my local farm, farm and you or a local farm and you five minutes or ten minutes or half an hour down the road it's easy to just hop in your car and go down there and and, and check us out what um, are the biggest challenges that you have as a farmer uh, a apart from the weather yes. <laughs> everybody battles with the weather that's something we can't control right. um, you know what would be ideal is if the farm was all in one location we spread out uh, over 30 or 40 miles okay. eight different parcels of land that has its own complications in managing uh, things um, but in general uh, I don't think that they you know, the way I've got it is really great because of the community. The community supports and understands our needs and is appreciative of the fact that there's a place where they can source um, food that they're really interested in um, purchasing. And, um, you know, that, that helps keep the farm alive, for Excellent. sure. Now, from the soil and the water, I know that there's been some concerns and issues in the Merrimack Valley and around related to some of the chemicals that have been leaching into the water system and the soil system. Could you tell us a little more, more about that and what it, is the effect on your farm and other farms as far as the quality of the food and the growing of it? Uh, yes, uh, so uh, probably back in February at some point uh, the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services um, announced that there was certain uh, water contamination issues uh, in Merrimack and Litchfield, um, and the water was contaminated with uh, high levels of PFOA, which is a fluorocarbonate. Um, and that's made in Teflon. They they use this in Teflon non nonstick cookware utensils. and um, you know even things like plumbing tape mm. that's got Teflon in it would have PFOAs. Um, and the, the areas affected seem to be um, deep well aquifers um, and uh, so the Department of Environmental Services um, you know notified everybody and have done some follow-up testing and testing uh, different water sources and uh, are also just out of precaution testing the soil. Mm -hmm. um, the concern level is 100 parts per trillion, according to um, the EPA, mm -hmm. um, as, an, uh, as a, uh, um, what we, a concern. Uh, at 400 parts per trillion, it's, uh, you know, they are really concerned about it. What we've so far tested with the water that we use on the farm uh, is just what they refer to as background levels with um, low readings of PFOA. Unfortunately, because of the world we live in and how we've done things, we've contaminated our own backyards. Mm. Um, who knows with what, I mean, there's no way to test what is all in the soil uh, unless you're looking for something specific. Um, <clears throat> but uh, where my farm's concerned, it seems like the only levels we have are what they consider sort of background um, levels that you'd find um, in drinking water probably throughout the country. So nothing that would impact the quality of your food or, or impact in any way the animals that are um, living on your farm and producing um, the food that you're providing as well as the vegetables or anything like that? Um, that is correct and that's my <clears throat> belief about it. Um, they, the EPA recommends that probably everybody, uh, you know, in the United States has got some level of PFOAs already in their body because it is in the, in the environment at large. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so there's, there's no way of really, you know, saying to everybody, oh, it's all okay. What I can tell you is that, um, you know, we don't use pesticides, we don't use herbicides, we don't uh, use chemical fertilizers, and we work with what's in the soil, and as provided that those levels are what is concerned, uh, considered a safe level, I think that, you know, that's just what we have to live with because that's what we've done to our planet. What are you most proud of? <clears throat> 
regarding your farm and what you've been able to create there? Um, what I'm most uh, proud of uh, with the farm is uh, the organism as a whole, the farm I look at as an organism as a whole. We function well, we've got a good crew that work there, the spirit's really great, we've got great um, members to the CSA, great customers that come and support and, and there's this feeling of well-being um, and you can visit the farm and, and see the animals and you can see them the way nature intended them. Um, so they're not caged, they're roaming, they're they, moving. They, yes, uh, they, there's obviously confines to it, but um, things like chickens get moved every single day, so they're getting onto a new piece of uh, clean grass um, every single day. The cows are rotating, um, you know, three or four times a day we move them to a new piece of grass. Everything has its place in this big, you know, if you picture a Swiss clock mm -hmm. with all the... Um, different gears in it. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how the farm um, works and it's in sync with with nature. Um, so, you know, I'm I'm really happy, uh, well, I'm proud of the fact that there's a lot of support and people appreciate what we're doing. So, and you, you feel really good about the quality of the food that you produce? Most definitely, yes, um, because I know you are what you eat. It's very, very true. Right. And um, at least, you know, with the food that we're producing there, that there's a lot of care and nurturing from all parties involved to make sure that if it's the animals, that they're being treated humanely and in a way that shows the utmost respect for that animal. Uh, with the vegetables, it's the same type of thing. We give a lot of consideration. We got a pest in infestation. Sure, it would be easy to go out and buy something that'll just knock the socks out of that pest. But we try and look at biological factors and um, conditions, you know, weather conditions and things like that, and, and and really try and think about the bigger picture. Whoever takes over the farm, you know, one day um, I want to leave a better place, it in better condition than what I found it, and I found it in pretty decent condition and I'd like to hand it over to somebody knowing that I've been a good steward of the land. Yes, and that's really important. It is. Our it land is. is really, it gives Mother Earth is something that we cannot take for granted. Yes, we're only here for a blink of an eye. A blink of an eye. Yes. And that's why it's important what we eat. Yes. A food is good medicine. Yes. And if we know where it's coming from and that the quality is good and that it is being grown well and raised well and cared for in a nurturing, wonderful, healthy way, that makes all the difference related to our bodies when we consume it. For sure. And, and it's, uh, it's important also how you produce that food because that uh, is, you know, creating an envir a healthy environment as well. And in summary, from your perspective, how is it that you're raising that food? And why would people be interested in uh, participating in a CSA? Well, we, um, in summary, we, uh, to summarize, we raise this food holistically as close to the way it would naturally grow in nature. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we take a lot of care in taking care of the soil and taking care of the livestock and taking care of the plants. Why people would want to join the CSA? Well, in the first place, it's a support of something local, something you can touch, something you can feel. It's, it's there at your farm as well. You don't have 10 acres to put a cow and grow vegetables and stuff, and I'm taking on that responsibility of doing it for you. And you know, my door is open and you're welcome to come in and check out what we do. And you'll see that we'll do it just as well as if you had the time to take care of a garden for yourself. And you have that knowledge behind you as far as the best practices related to the education to know what to do to do it well. Yes, uh, you know, every day is a learning experience. And, um, but we've, we've 
put together a lot of knowledge over the years of how to do things, and uh, every year we keep improving. So CSAs aren't <coughs> for everyone. No. And the reason for that is? You know, it's a lifestyle um, commitment. Uh, it's about understanding that if you've got a certain diet and you're accustomed to eating a certain way, that this might not fit into that. Um, because it's based upon the growing season. It's based on the growing season. Mm -hmm. And so what you're actually doing is you kind of going back to our prehistoric ancestors, our our, <laughs> uh, you know, and, um, you know, eating in a similar fashion to the way they would because they didn't have refrigerators or anything like that. So, so they, they were eating fresh. They were eating fresh and they were harvesting what was available at that time of... Um, yeah, agriculture came in, and now we're able to, um, you, you know, plan it a little bit better and, and make sure that um, there are always carrots in, in an abundance instead of just finding one carrot over here and one over there and spending the whole day getting a bundle of carrots. We've managed to figure out how to, you know, do it in such a way that um, five minutes will gather you your bundle of carrots. So an understanding that food is good medicine and to learn where and how you can become a member of the CSA and to learn about it and what you grow and how you grow it, people can contact you at? Uh, they can contact me um, uh, on, my, um, website? on my website and my email address is up there as well as my so phone Steve number. So it's stevenormanton.com? Uh, it, stevenormanton.com. Mm -hmm. And... Um, they can just shoot uh, me an email. If they have I'll, any questions, have and any on questions. the website they can learn more about a CSA and what yes. it is that you provide. And uh, a little bit about how we do things on the farm. And also, they can always come to visit the farm, correct? To yes. learn more about it. And it's located where? At uh, 226 Charles Bancroft Highway in Litchfield, New Hampshire. Excellent. And again, it would be stevenormanton.com. Yes. And uh, we greatly appreciate all that you're doing and helping our community be healthy and well. And we thank you so much for being here. Until next time, have a great day. Thanks for having me.